hosting uh, Father Philip Odi, the Executive Secretary of the Social Communications uh, at the Uganda Catholic Secretariat, and Mr. Victor Arinaitwe, the founder of Uganda Catholics Online. Please follow us on all those platforms and join in the conversation. Uh, call a friend to join us also because there is a lot that we'll be learning uh, tonight. Before we go any further, I'm going to ask Father to lead us in a prayer, then we can kick off our show. Father. Yeah, thank you so much. Let us put ourselves in the mood of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our loving Father, we give you glory. We give you thanks for this day. We thank you so much for our TV. We thank you so much for all our Catholic media institutions. We thank you for the, this program that we are, we are starting now. We ask you, Lord, that your mass and love, you may send your Holy Spirit to be with us as we discuss issues of the Catholic Church and the media. But also we ask you to bless all those people who organize this, the team at the Catholic, at the Catholic Television, and all the people who are involved in organizing this program. Bless them, bless our listeners, and all those who are dear to us. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. Yes. And we have these talks every Thursday from 6 p.m. to uh, 7 p.m. here live on UCTV and on the platforms that I have shared. These talks are meant to help us as the laity to understand our faith, the Catholic faith, and the religion that we subscribe to. So tonight's topic on discerning the truth in this digital age. We've had so many times people say the future is digital. Everything is going to be digital soon. And I believe the Catholic Church also has a future. And if we are going to be in that future, then we must take advantage of what this future is offering. So if there is digital in the future, where does this leave the Catholic Church? Do we also follow the digital age? Do we stay behind and say, no, we are traditional? Uh, Father Odi is going to be explaining this to us. But before we dive into deep, I would like to understand from Father Odi, what is the truth in the context of the Catholic Church? Because I myself am a journalist, and the way I think of the truth, I've seen so many times, it's not the same way the Catholic Church thinks about the truth. So what is the truth? Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, thank you for hosting us, this program. Uh, here we are looking at the Catholic Church and the media uh, in relation to discerning the truth in the digital age. Uh, I would like first to say in general, when you talk about the truth, you are talking about uh, a correlation between the uh, what is presented and the reality, yes. the reality of facts. So what is that correlation? Once there is a, a, a connection between the two, then you can say there is truth in this, that what is being said, what is being what, is corresponding to the reality, the reality. So that, in a way, uh, points to the truth. Mm -hmm. that it, it, the, the facts or the reality that is being talked about is, is actual. When you talk about the truth as in the quality of the church, but well, as we believe that Jesus is the truth, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because himself he said, yeah, I'm the truth, I'm the way and the, the life mm -hmm. and the years. Anyone who wants to reach the Father has to go through me. Mm -hmm. So if we want to know the truth, mm -hmm. the truth comes from God. Yes. And Jesus is God. So if we want to know the truth about life, about anything, we have to make recourse to, to God. Yes. So you can say Jesus is the truth because what he reveals to us is what it is. Is the reality, mm. is the actual, is the facts about life, about anything that Jesus communicates to us mm. is real. Is real. So in short, I would say that that the truth is where you get the facts corresponding to reality. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I think there is actually a prayer we have in the Catholic Church that says, mm -hmm. I believe in the Catholic Church because I know it It never lies. It mm -hmm. cannot lie to, to me. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Father. Um, I'll move on to 
our other panelist, uh, Ali Naitwe, Victor, to introduce himself. He's from one of, of, of the, I think, the best um, online platforms that are promoting the Catholic faith in Uganda. And as he introduces himself, I'll, I'll ask him, uh, what is Uganda Catholics online? What is your mandate? What do you do? How did you start? And why are you here? In, in this digital age, <laughs> where do you fall? Thank you very much, Sarah, and uh, Uganda Catholic TV for hosting us and indeed for this great topic. Um, Uganda Catholics Online is just a faith-based organization and uh, it's a non-for-profit. And uh, we started this way back in 2018, but before that, uh, 2016, as an international platform, Catholic Youth, it started as a, a small group of young people on WhatsApp. So uh, I picked up a phone and created a group WhatsApp then. So and uh, we, I started adding my friends in that group. The group went on increasing in numbers. So our aim was uh, we wanted to serve God. We wanted to, you know, be near to God, to tell out. Um, different songs, activities in the church, in the Catholic church, to the different people who were in that group. But the dreams kept on you know, increasing high and high. We uh, created then a Facebook page and we named it the same name, Uganda Catholics Online. We created a YouTube channel that's now in 2018. And still, the main aim was sharing the word of God, sharing the Catholic uh, content on that platform. So when we reached 20, 20, 2021 there when COVID-19 uh, came. Actually now people started getting a lot of attention because people were at home. People were not moving in churches. And this platform, by then we had uh, uh, National Director the late Father Chis Toyando. I, I just got him on Facebook and I, request, I could request him mm -hmm. to say mass uh, online when he was in Aroa. And he was able to actually, you know, go live on Facebook. I met him there, the mean, and then he says that he, he conducts mass with one of the maids in, in where he was staying. So that's how now everything went on, increasing and increasing. That is when people started now watching daily masses and the, the reflections and the readings. So basically, it's about sharing the goodness of Christ, because we are all called to serve the Lord. When we, are, when we are baptized, we are called disciples. So we are called to serve the Lord. So that's how the dream kept on moving, basically. Mm. All right. Uh, that's really good. And it's inspiring for the rest of us to also, you know, follow in the same uh, road. But um, Uganda, because, talking about digital media, Uganda has not like fully embraced digital. We look at digital as where all the misinformation happens. Every disinformation happens. When someone shares something, you have to first go and, and fact check for you to be sure that it's it's true. What are some of the challenges that you faced when you were starting out? Thank you so much for that question. We first, of course, uh some challenges and uh, Father Odi here will bear me witness. I used to, <laughs> I used to, I may say disturb him, but it's actually, I, I wanted facts because we got um, um, some challenges during our start. You, you find, you get a message, someone is telling you, uh, there's a priest who has died in, in this diocese. Please, can you be able to confirm to us? But, you know, we're a young uh, media group we just started, uh, we don't know yet where to start from and all that. Our aim was sharing the good news, the daily readings and what. But you find that it was demanding you to actually know a lot of uh, things regarding 
uh, the media and the uh, Catholic information. So some of the challenges we faced were, of course, uh, getting the the true information from the public because there was a lot of false information. Someone would send you uh, a clip of, of a video that Mother Mary has appeared in this region, you know, and mm -hmm. in that video you are seeing only the sun and mm -hmm. all that. So that was a challenge to us, and I was like, we can't really, you know, share okay. this to our yes to our public. We wanted to know what is the ideal of, you know, these miracles being in the church. So that's when I could most of the times ask uh, Father Odi. But also we face challenges of uh, a timely uh, update, updating on our platforms then because of the limited resources we we had because by then I was at school and the, sometimes I could not have that and I was solely alone by that time. But as we kept on moving, things uh, started being okay. So the limited resources of sharing information because we could use a phone, uh, a certain megapixel phone to capture some of the video, a choir singing, and they could look like a star. I mean, when you're watching, oh, yeah. you just hear the sound, but you can't be able to view properly the video. So yeah, that was one of the challenges, the resources which we encountered. Uh, but also, uh, we, I was also, we were also facing the, the, the reliable sources by then being uh, a medical personnel and uh, we, we could ask ourselves where should we get the right information the channels of communication uh, especially here in uganda that's that's how now we got to know about the uganda episcopal conference that we need to get information through the right channels mm -hmm. so uh, those are the few among others because we could get whatsapp uh, groups, you know, someone shares content that you see is not really, you know, it's not appealing, important. you know, yeah. and someone shares a video in the WhatsApp group and that time there was no delete for everyone. Oh. Everyone will download and says, what is this? So that was that a challenge also um, among the men. Uh, thank you so much. You know, they say that 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 a lie runs mm -hmm. faster than the truth. Mm -hmm. And there, there are so many lies that are being told. And most of them actually go through uh, these digital platforms, especially TikTok now and, mm -hmm. and WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And when someone picks something, whichever information they have picked, they share in a group. So in that group, let's say the group has 200 people, at least 100 people are going to reshare that message. And, you know, and send it to someone then someone also sends it to someone and and by the time you you check you find forwarded too many times mm -hmm. but some of some of this information that is shared is what is out there for us as catholics to actually see and you know go and check and read but some people don't know where to find this information mm -hmm. so father does the catholic church have media platforms online digital media platforms where all the information that we as Catholics are supposed to follow and value as the truth is shared. If they are, what are these platforms? Yeah, thanks Sarah for that question. Uh, before I answer that question directly, mm. I would like to point out that uh, as human beings, mm. we tell the truth, but we also sometimes tell lies. Yeah. The two tendencies are there in a human being. Even the, without talking about digital media, misinformation is always there. Mm -hmm. People tell the truth, but they also lie. Even in our villages, there are people who spread rumors. Oh, yeah. So I think for me, the most important thing is that uh, whenever we get information, we cross check. Mm -hmm. Even without media, okay. uh, in the village, somebody can come with a rumor and say, have you heard that this has happened? Now, usually what do you do? You cross check with another person. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody has told me this. 
is it true? Mm. Is it that's the is it true? So in other words, we are to, you are trying to confirm mm. whether what has been said is true it's or true. not. And for me, that is the right approach, mm. irrespective of whether you are talking about media and media, whether even it is interpersonal communication, and you are doubtful, you cross check, you cross check. Now coming back to the Catholic Church, uh, there are there is information that uh, people spread about the Catholic Church that sometimes is false, and the. Uh, the moment you have a question mark, mm -hmm. the principle is that cross check with the relevant authority. Mm -hmm. And that is not true only in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. even in the other settings. For example, if there is an accident and you're a journalist, you want to report, mm -hmm. you will talk to the people around. People are going to tell you, oh, so many people have died. Mm. About 100 people have died. And sometimes it's now, only one. Now, as a responsible <laughs> journalist or communicator, or you cross-check with the relevant authorities. Mm. So what do you do? You go to the police. Mm. And the police will give you the facts. Because the police, that is their work. When there's an accident, their work is to come and assess mm. what has happened and give the public the facts. So usually that is the principle that they when the in case of doubt, mm -hmm. you cross check with relevant authorities. So the same now when it comes to church and media mm -hmm. or church and communication. Mm -hmm. When something happens, for example, in a parish, even if you don't have a phone, even if you don't have I don't have access to any media, there are people who are authorities in the particular churches. Uh, in the parish, you have the parish priest, you have the catechist, you have the parish leaders. So when something happens and you hear information, you cross check with relevant authorities. Mm. If somebody comes up with information, oh, there's a new bishop, and it's not, you're not sure. Oh, yes. you, you call your parish priest and mm. say, I've had this. Or you call your architect, or you call any relevant, some trustworthy authority. Mm. Now, when it comes to now the media, the church has platforms mm -hmm. where official information mm -hmm. is communicated. Let's begin at the highest level, at the level of the Vatican, oh, yeah. the Universal Church. The Vatican has a website. It has a website, www.vatican.va. So if there's something concerning the Universal Church, at the, maybe something to do with the Vatican, the Pope has said this. The Pope, where, where do you go to? If you have access to the internet, mm -hmm. Google, go to the Vatican website and find out whether that information is actually there. They also have the, the Vatican radio, we have the Catholic, I mean, the Vatican media. Uh, there are so many Catholic media institutions that you can Google and then get information. So the, part, you know, the principle is, Cross check with the relevant authority. For the Catholic Church, it is a universal. The Vatican has other media around it. You have the Catholic television, for the church, you have the, the Los Salvador Romanos, the newspaper for the Vatican, the website, and all that. And the, so you can cross check with all those the platforms at the universal level. Okay. And if it's at the level, say, of the region, oh, yeah. uh, we have, for example, Amesea. Amesea, that's an association of Catholic conferences in East Africa, East and Central Africa. They also have websites. And uh, and locally also, as a Catholic church in Uganda, yeah, we have uh, authorities. We have our bishops. We have our priests. We have uh, our catechists. We have our church leaders. We have Catholic platforms. Mm -hmm that you can cross-check. The Uganda Episcopal Conference, for example, has a website. It also has a, we also have a, yeah, we have a website. So you can cross-check with the website of the conference. If the information has not yet been uploaded the website, then you cross-check with the, in the closest authority that you have. Mm. Yeah, so the, the main thing is to cross-check with the relevant authority, and also the platforms, the official platforms of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm.
Yes, you can. Yeah, right. and there are very many. I can't name all of them. <laughs> oh yeah, there are very many official uh, platforms of the Catholic Church. Okay. We also can have them a, some in Kampala. Yeah, Uganda Catholic Television, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we have a we have a platform. We also have uh, uh, WhatsApp groups that uh, are what are managed by the Catholic Church or Catholic institutions. Mm -hmm. And many of the Catholic institutions, even the dioceses, have websites. And the conference has a website, so those news outlets are there. Okay. Maybe the challenge is that maybe we have not publicized them enough. Exactly. We have not publicized them enough to for people to know. Oh yeah, I was actually yeah. going to to ask how do we let our people know that these mm -hmm. platforms do exist and this is what you find on this platform. Yeah. Let's say like when I'm searching something about Ugandan matters, I know that I'll go to on the Munyonyo uh, platform. There yeah. is a website, or I'll, I'll check Namugongo, but um. One of the common questions that people always ask is, what is this marriage thing and the Catholic Church? And and then when you tell someone, when, why don't you find out? They ask that from where? <laughs> uh, the, good, the beauty of the digital media is that things, you know, the digital media can also be described as the information age, mm. digital, the digital age, information age, computer age, yeah. where technology has made the flow of information very fast. Of course, it has its advantages and disadvantages, mm. but looking at the, the positive side of it, oh yes, it even makes things easier for us mm -hmm. that the, if there's any information that you want about the Catholic faith, mm. it is available in the digital a, a digital uh, in the internet, let me put that in the internet. Mm. You want to read the Catechism of the Catholic Church? Oh yes. You just type. Uh, you just type and you look for it. It is there available. The full text is there. Mm. You want to know about the what the, the canon law of mm. the church. All those documents are there. You go to the. You go to you Google. You type in the the canon law of the Catholic Church, mm. and it will give you the whole text. Mm. You want to read the Bible? You go there. It is there. The Bible. It's available. Yeah. Yes. You want the, the Jerusalem Bible? Oh yeah. You just Google it is Catholic there. Catholic answers. So <laughs> Catholic answers. You want to read any document that has been produced in the history of the church? Mm. The Pope produces so many documents, eh? encyclicals, eh, declarations, pastoral letters, eh, messages. They are all available. In fact, if you go to the, the if you go to the website of the, the Vatican. Mm. It is there. It gives you first. It will give you what all the popes have have, have written and mm -hmm. have. So you want the, the message. What did the, the Holy Father say yesterday? Oh, you yeah. just go there and you get. The angelus. You want to know what in what are the documents the Catholic mm -hmm. Church produced last year? Mm -hmm. They are there. Yeah, they are there. So it's all about to maybe understanding how to use mm -hmm. how to use the the digital media. Okay. How to use it? I think that's what the problem is. That mm -hmm. I, I think our people also have a problem. They want to be sometimes spoon fed. Oh yes. That we <laughs> we, we don't want to take initiative to do a bit of research. Mm -hmm. People are so impatient that uh, they are not ready to wait a bit, like for five minutes to oh, yes. cross check. Yeah? Because something has happened before something. they respond. Yes. And then there's also the disease of uh, forwarding. Oh yes. And as soon as you get some information, you, you must forward to someone before you. You think. forward, yeah. Even when you when, before knowing whether it is true or not true, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Who said it? You forward, forward. Okay. For me, that is the mentality of rumor mongering. Oh yes, eh? and then R this week we had one of, of the that AI generated photo of uh, Jesus appearing in like Kassese, a cloud. Yeah, uh, in, in Kassese, now, some saying it is massacre. Now everyone now, was... <laughs> one said Kassese, another said massacre. Yeah. yeah. Now, if something like that happens, mm. why do you forward before you know whether it is really credible or not? It is true or not? Mm. For me, the natural reaction is, is it true? Oh, yes. You get me? Because the human being by nature searches for truth. Mm. We search for truth. We want to search what is factual. Oh, yes. Is it real? 
Yeah, that is what we always search for as a human being. There's a desire to know the truth, to know the right thing, to know the correct thing. So when something, something like that happens, try to cross-check. For example, that, that I don't know how you call it, that image. The that AI just, generated yeah, image. Uh, that image which was generated. <laughs> yeah. Now, if something like that is posted, mm. You try to cross check also with the other media. Oh yes. How come other media have not reported that it is only on WhatsApp? Mm. Something, an event like that happens, and no one, and, and, and no one is and you don't, you don't find it, it anywhere like else. Yes, yeah, you don't find yeah. it anywhere. Oh yes. No. And uh, I have to commend the uh, Victor and the uh, the whole establishment of Ghana Catholics Online because we have a very good collaboration, and whenever there is an issue. As he, 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 cons- he calls, he cross checks, you know, that cross checking is very important. Yeah. And he, do, by doing that, you build credibility. Oh, yes. You build because credibility. Because now, when something happens, if I want to know uh-huh. what I, I run to, to, the, to their platform. Exactly. Because they cross check oh, yes. with the relevant authorities. And even as a human being mm-hmm. in the day to day life, if you are known to spread rumors, People will not trust you. No, they won't. <laughs> you lose credibility. So it is always good to ensure that what when what we share, what mm. we what is true, because it, it also it is also good for our own integrity. Mm. You as a person that people come to trust you. Even in a meeting when you speak, people will listen. Oh yes. Because they know that they that know person is saying. not still there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I think in the summary, mm. the Catholic Church has platforms. Uh, you just go to Google. Mm. You, if you just type you can have spoke conference, it will even lead you to the website. Mm. If you type the Vatican uh, Vatican website, it will lead you to the Vatican uh, website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe and, one 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 of the other issues I I, I feel like we face mm. in in this communication, like there is some gap of mm. sorts. So I have gone to to the Vatican. Uh, website. Mm-hmm. I have searched. I've seen the document that I'm looking for, mm. but I basically don't understand what I'm reading. Mm. Yes, I can read. I understand English. It is in English, mm. but interpretation. Mm. Where do we get this interpretation? And as as the Catholic Church now in Uganda, as the communication secretariat, social communication mm. secretariat, do we have some priests whose role is to read these these documents and interpret them for us to who wants mm-hmm. to to understand if the pope has issued a decree on on human dignity mean mm-hmm. massacre i i see it again day now mm-hmm. i need someone to read it mm-hmm. interpret it <laughs> and tell me i can read it myself yes. but my interpretation may be wrong and when someone asks me, have you read this? I'll be like, oh, yeah, I read about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says that that um, people who, who have uh, who are of the same sex can't do this. People who, you know, the yeah. way I have understood it. Yeah. But maybe it is wrong. Does the church have these priests who are there, all people, experts, who are there to interpret these documents and then share them with us in a way we can understand, easily understand them? Yeah. Uh, what I would say is that uh, all church leaders, especially for the religious, because our training, mm. it trains us using the church language. So we are trained uh, using those terms. So mm. we, somehow the, we are familiar with them because through our training as priests, you keep hearing the same terms. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent upon us as the leaders of the church to help our people to understand oh, yes. these documents. So there are priests who are specialized in certain areas. For example, there are priests, all, all, all priests, for example, study canon law, uh, the law of the church. Mm-hmm. All priests study liturgy. But then there are those who go and do more specialized studies. Mm-hmm. So they become, they have more expertise than others. Mm-hmm. But in general, all the priests uh, have, I could I would say experts, because the tra- our training uh, is supposed to help us to interpret, but also to help people to understand the, the messages that the, the church gives. Okay. So are there people? Yes, the priests are there. Mm-hmm. They, they are there. 
there are those who are more specialized than others. So if you want a very deep, deep, deep analysis, then mm. you say, okay, who is the canon law? If something about the canon law. Oh, yes. But otherwise, all the priests should be able to do it. Mm. And the, the religious, they should be able to do it because mm. that training really is adequate for... And the, also, there are, there are usually commentaries mm. on some of these documents. Okay. Yeah, even the canon law has a commentary to explain canon law. Mm. And they are there, they are available on the internet. Also, and commentaries they are reading to, culture, yes, it's also not. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know. It, as I said, I think the problem we have, we, we always want somebody to read for us. Oh, yes. And I don't know that is a, a disease in the Catholic Church. No, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. <laughs> that people don't want to take time mm. to understand something. But they want somebody else to do it. To for understand them, for, for us. Which is also risky because they, it, it makes you dull in a way. Because mm -hmm. the human brain is very powerful. It can do so many things. And you have to challenge it. Mm. It's a, it, it you read it over and over. You could research about it, you can do some research, you can talk to other people, mm -hmm. and somehow you'll be able to understand. Okay. Yeah. And and maybe we can we can take advantage of, of now the digital platforms exactly. that we have. Yeah. You know. Many of these documents have commentaries, mm -hmm. summaries. You in, if you don't have the time to read mm -hmm. the whole document, you, you can look for the summary. Okay. Uh, uh, summary usually summaries are simplified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the simplified versions are there. Mm -hmm. Interpret interpret interpretations are there. Mm -hmm. If you can't get them, you are in the village, you don't have access to internet, you can go to your priest, you can and by the way, mm -hmm. even in the church, mm -hmm. you find that uh, in our preaching, mm -hmm. we usually you can talk about the scriptures, but you can also integrate some of these documents into your preaching. Okay. Yeah, into your preaching. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Father, I'm going to stop you a bit there. We'll go for a very short commercial break. Then we return and start from where we have stopped. And thank you so much for watching us. Those who are following us on Zoom, please stick around. Those on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>
Saints, uh, Father Philip Edu, Arinai Twe from Uganda Catholic Online. And uh, before we went for, for the break, we were talking about the experts that the Catholic Church has who can help us understand the messages that are included in these decrees and, and other documents uh, of the Catholic Church, especially those that come directly from the Vatican and uh, miss uh, inform and people pick and misinform others using those documents and we've heard that we do have the experts we also do have our parish leaders and the parish priests to help us understand these messages so now um, I'm going to to ask uh, Mr. Vinaitwe you as Uganda Catholics online how are you helping us now bring out these uh, these voices of experts for people to understand. Let's say um, there is a decree on, on human dignity and we are all wondering what, what does this mean but there is a priest expert who can speak to it, who can help us interpret. Do you offer them the platforms to do that so that the rest of us can sit home and watch the priest explain to us what this means? And the reason I'm asking this is because uh, when we had the, the decree on, on the blessing of the church there is one priest who came out i don't remember his name but but he gave an analogy and and explained to the layman using a layman's language that everyone could understand what this document meant and until he came out to write everyone was sharing their own opinion but when his opinion came out now people started forwarding his opinion now everyone started understanding what this meant do we, as a platform of Uganda Catholics Online, give a chance to these priests and other experts to explain the messages to the people? Or do we charge them money and, you know, someone says, I don't have money to pay you for me to appear? Thank you so much for that great question. It's actually a great one. <laughs> but as a uh, uh, platform, we don't actually charge for... Uh, such activities mm -hmm. we don't do charge so um yes we do give uh, uh opportunities to different uh people in the church different clergy so uh we always have uh different uh activities which are carried out uh, for example um i may give a small example when uh, this television was starting I contacted Father OD uh, together with our team and people were asking a lot of questions about the television and uh, we could put up uh, a session where Father OD could actually answer them and the progress of where the TV has reached. So we do give a uh, platform to different priests uh, to air out different uh, messages because we have had the Easter messages, the Christmas messages, the press conferences. So we do uh, uh, upload them on our different sites so that the information can be spread further more to the people out there. But also we, we give the lay people uh, also an opportunity to share what they, they, they have. Because like uh, our WhatsApp groups, you find that someone wants to uh, ask a question about a different topic. So we, we allow questions uh, to come up and then be able to answer them. And we have actually received a lot of questions uh, on different uh, topics in the church. And what we do, we always accept them and then uh, transfer them to the relevant, uh, relevant yeah. <laughs> we, because we have uh, priests actually on our uh, executive, but also we have priests in those WhatsApp groups on those platforms. Mm -hmm. But the people need to realize that the people out there on, on the screens, you know, they see the messages being typed on the phone, but there are people behind those screens. Oh, yes. There are people behind those screens. It's not uh, an automated thing. Even if it's an automated message, there's someone who is someone dealing with that. Yeah. Yes. So there the, the are people behind those screens. So we always listen. We should have a mutual uh, listening to, to them. We listen to the questions. 
um, their misunderstandings and then be able to answer them. Uh, we have uh, priests, as I've told you, but we also have lay people because someone would ask, what is the difference between an archbishop and then the bishop? Mm -hmm. So, this, yeah. yes, this calls uh, for, of course, critical thinking. Father was saying here that people want to be spoon-fed. Yes, but we need to take an initiative mm. to be critical thinkers okay. because we need to think, we need to do research on different topics. Because if... Uh, if someone asks an archbishop the difference between an archbishop and the bishop, you need to uh, consult uh, where your uh, parish is, for example, because the church teaches us from childhood level, we do catechism, we know what is our father and, and, and all that and those the prayers. But now when it goes on improving and going to another level uh, where you bring in the hierarchies and all that of the church, that's when now you can be able to actually ask those questions. So we, we need to also uh, consult trusted Catholic authorities, as Father was saying, so that we can be able to know the truth. Okay. So uh, answering your question, we do allow, and then we uh, do accept those mm -hmm. uh, questions we get and be able to give them out because we have received very, very many. So that's that's basically how we, we can do it. Okay. That. Now, Father, from, from the Catholic Secretariat and the Social Communications Office, mm -hmm. um, every parish, I understand, has a social communicator. Um, are these people equipped to respond to if maybe someone has a question, let's say like I'm the social communicator of Munyonyo mm -hmm. and uh, such a photo was, was, you know, going around and I tell people, you know what, this is actually not right. And um, there are other, you know, other information that, that is going to be shared that maybe mm -hmm. the social communicator is also not very sure about. How, how does the church equip these social communicators, in case the priest is not available, they are the only readily available persons. Mm. Are they equipped enough to answer questions that come from the Christians? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, before I answer that question, let me just let our viewers know. In fact, my role in the Catholic Church in Uganda mm is to ensure that this information flow. So I communicate, I coordinate the communication activities of the Catholic Church. Mm. Uh, in Uganda. In Uganda. Yes. Of course, the Catholic Secretariat is our head office, so I'm based here as a national coordinator for communication. So uh, your question is very relevant because it's actually my responsibility to ensure that the Catholic communicators in Uganda mm are supported uh, when they need information, I'm available. I may not have the answers, I may not have the information, mm -hmm. but I can help them to get the information. Oh, yes. Like Victor said, you know, whenever they have something, they, they can call me. I may not have the, 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 the answer or the question, I mean, the, the that information they're looking for, mm -hmm. but I can refer them. I, I know where that information can be got. Okay. So, the way the Catholic Church in Uganda is structured is such that uh, we have the national office mm. uh, and that national office of communication coordinates the other communication offices in the dioceses, mm. but also uh, in the Catholic, different Catholic media institutions, the Catholic radios and so forth, the TVs. So the national office coordinates all of them, supports them mm. and ensures that uh, they are well equipped in terms of training. So we organize trainings every year mm. for our Catholic communicators, uh, especially those who are heading communication offices in the dioceses. We usually, then uh, when we train them, mm. they are also supposed to train the others, especially at the parish level. So at, at the diocesan level, every diocese has a communications office and a mm. communications coordinator. At the parish level, each parish should have, but many don't have, 
but what I know, like in Kampala Diocese, mm. I think all the parishes have all the parishes. communication secretaries. Yes. Yes. So mm. what you see in Kampala is what is supposed to be replicated in, in the other dioceses as well. Okay. And that helps with the flow of information. So that if there is information that is supposed to go out, mm. there are channels. Of course, there are other channels besides that. Now, if somebody wants information uh, in the parish, whom do you go to? Of course, as I said, if it's an official a message that you want to know, you go to the, you are better go in the parish priest. Oh, yes. But the communication secretary is supposed to support in the flow of that information. You so, get me. So in, the in, parish in priest that tells the the communication secretary, then the the secretary brings. They should to, be the ones to, to help that to ensure that that information flows to the other Christians. Mm -hmm. For example, a parish could have a WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. A parish could have a website. A parish could have a publication. A parish can have even a radio. Some in some developed world, you can have a parish as a radio mm -hmm. or a diocese has a, a radio. So the communication secretary is supposed to ensure that information is flowing. He may not be the one originating that information. Mm. He may not be the one who is the author, okay, but okay. he helps to ensure that information is, that is flowing. Okay. He helps, the, for example, if it is the diocese, he helps the diocese, the bishop, to ensure that what the bishop is communicating reaches the people. If it is in the parish, the community secretary is, is work is to ensure that his or her work is to ensure that what the parish wants to communicate, what they maybe the parish wants to communicate with the Christians, mm -hmm. the information is flowing. So he may not have the answers. Oh, yeah. So if you go to him and ask, can you explain for me this document of the Pope? Mm -hmm. He may not be able to explain, but he may help you to know who can who can explain. help you to explain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope I've answered your question. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So that's the way we, the Catholic Church is structured. Mm. Yeah. That we have structures mm. of communication right from the national level right up to the parish level. Mm. And when you go upwards, it goes up to the Vatican. Okay. Yes. Now, um, when when you you check most WhatsApp groups, like yeah. nearly every parish now has a WhatsApp group, even yeah. those in the villages. Yes. There are so many prayers that are authored by mm. individuals, especially with the lay people, mm. because I love to pray. So I wake up one morning, I write a prayer, and then I I send it to, you know, my, the, my parish's WhatsApp group. Someone picks that prayer and sends it around. And from what I understand from, from the Catholic liturgy uh, communications that I've had, is that the, the prayers are actually, they are signed maybe by a cardinal, by a bishop, by maybe a monsignor. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you say about these prayers that we see around WhatsApp all the time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we allowed as lay people to just, you know, author prayers and, and distribute them around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, sir. You see, there are two types of prayers. I would do in this in this particular case. Mm. You have what we call official prayers of the Catholic Church. Mm. Those prayers have to be approved by the relevant authority. If that prayer is supposed to be said in the diocese, the mm. bishop has to approve. You get me. Mm. If it's a, if it's a universal prayer, then it has to be appro approved by the Vatican level. Okay. If it is a prayer particular to a, a parish, mm. that it, the parish is celebrating something and they want to have a, a novena, and in that novena, this is the these are the prayers they are going to use. Mm. Those prayers must be approved by the parish, the parish priest, priest and sometimes even the bishop. But there are these private prayers. Mm. I want to pray for the sick. I want to, you don't need to keep going for approval for that. Mm. Yes. Those personal prayers. Uh, if, if, because I'm imagining that every WhatsApp group has an administrator. Mm. So that administrator has to be responsible. He has to be on alert to ensure that what is posted there mm. is not contradicting the doctrine of the Catholic Church or the teaching of the Catholic Church. Mm. So if somebody posts a prayer that is not really 
in line with the teaching of the church. The administrator should delete it. Okay. Should delete it. Mm -hmm. So the administrator has been on alert uh, to ensure that it, whatever is posted there uh, is in line with our faith. Mm -hmm. Because you can damage people's faith. There are people who are very simple in their faith, very innocent. So uh, the, the administrators are like the gatekeepers. Oh, yeah. uh, the, what, what, what goes to the public in within that uh, forum has to be a problem. You're like the parent the, protecting a child exactly. to ensure they don't consume yeah. what, what they are not yes. supposed. Uh, and that cuts consume. across. Mm. It cuts across uh, different platforms that uh, even in the government, mm. it, you cannot just say anything mm. and put it on the newspaper. You'll be called to account for it, mm. and uh, if a, if a, a newspaper publicizes something very false, mm. which is misleading the public, mm. the police will call you. It will bring you to order, mm -hmm. and that is the nature of society. That there has to be order, there has to be guidance, uh, so that uh, people are not misled. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Um, as a nightway, as we conclude, we come to the conclusion. Um. How well should we use these digital platforms that that have been allowed uh, to, to operate by the Catholic Church? And um, uh, do we really need more? Do you think that we have enough now, now that we have Uganda Catholics online reaching the entire country? Do you think we need more? And how well can we use that those that we already have? Thank you so much, Sarah, for that question. We actually need more because we need uh, the information to reach out there because we want the information. Mm -hmm. Wherever we are, we want to learn. We want to keep learning. We want to get to know what is happening in our Catholic Church. We want to know the truth. So I, I believe that we need more uh, platforms mm -hmm. like this. If uh, we have it at parish level, it, it will be a very good but also that the decision level is very good. We commend Radio Maria and the other uh, platforms which are always there mm -hmm. because there is a lot of information about Catholic. Mm -hmm. There is a lot. Oh, yes. Even right now, someone is already searching what, mm -hmm. is, what is going to happen with the Matters Day. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How is Nebi doing? <laughs> when are they organizing oh, yes. this? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want to know. So I believe that more platforms should come up. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't look at these platforms as uh, competitors mm -hmm. because, you know, we are communicating life. Mm -hmm. We are communicating with God. Mm -hmm. So as Father said that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, mm -hmm. this is the same way that we should be able to give information to to the rest of the, of the uh, uh, public there. So uh, whatever we share, post or comment or like, it should just be in our mind that we are communicating Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is the way we should be able to, to communicate out there. Mm -hmm. But also, um, we we need to, the question you have asked uh, about, you know, how, well do we, we, how do we use this uh, media? First, it should be for the good of, of the church, for the neighbor, mm -hmm. and then for the community. It should be centered on these three, mm -hmm. because w where we are, we are, we have a community, we live as a community. I have my neighbor, mm -hmm. you also have the neighbor where you are, but how are you treating this neighbor out mm -hmm. there? So we should be able to be compassionate to, to them, okay. even online, mm -hmm. because we get a lot of uh, criticism on some false posts, but what should be the way how to handle this should be um, rather than a question to the answer than a judgment. Oh, yes. Because when someone asks you, you know, you worship Mother Mary, mm -hmm. how do you respond to that question? Mm -hmm. You know, you explain to this person or you'll be able to wash him away. So mm -hmm. we need to also, you know, have that uh, storytelling mm -hmm. to our different people, especially on the media, so that they can be able to get us, Jesus teaches us. I give an example of the Good Samaritan parable, mm -hmm. uh, where you know the the, the two pass this robber was beaten, mm -hmm. but the one who remained and was the Samaritan helped yeah. this person. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to help 
our neighbors out there who should be able to help each other everyone using the social media. Mm. You on WhatsApp, you on Facebook, you on Twitter, but how you being able to help these people? Mm. We need to help them to okay. find the truth. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. Um, like he said, how you respond to someone, if someone comes with an insult, please be careful. Do not respond with an insult because you are more informed. So use that information that you have. Use the fact to respond. Uh, before we give Father uh, a chance to give his final remarks and give us a blessing, we are joined now on Zoom uh, by the UNCLA president, also the head of lady for the country, Mr. Jervas Indianabal. He will be joining us now. No remarks and give us a blessing as we close. Mr. Jervis. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, special thanks to, to Father Filippo D and Mr. Victor Arneite. Good evening, everyone. I, I will be very brief. I don't know if you can hear me, I was hearing an echo. I think there is a technical problem, no problem. I just wanted to wish everyone uh, all the best. And to remind everyone that this is the 60th edition in the series of Unkra Listen and Speaks. And I wanted to give a special welcome to our guests from, I can see friends from Kenya and from other countries. And to remind everyone that this show takes place every two weeks on Thursdays at 6 p.m. East African time. And it is on Uganda Catholic okay. TV, on and Zoom, from Kenya, and uh, on other countries. And to remind everyone that this show takes place every two weeks on Thursday at 6 p.m. East African time. And it is. And uh, on other countries. And to remind everyone that this show takes place every two weeks on Thursday. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Jervas Indianabo. He's the president of UNCLA and our head of lady uh, for the writings, closing remarks and a blessing. And we want to thank everyone who has joined us for this show, those who are watching live with UCTV. Those who watched us on uh, the YouTube channels on, on on YouTube, and those who have been following us on Zoom, we are very thankful. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Father. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, I would like to thank our uh, us on YouTube, and uh, just to say that. Uh, when we consume media uh, products, information, let us be critical. We need to be critical, don't be critical. And then I would like also to extend the word of appreciation to the child, uh, president of UNCLA, this fact is one who called me and invite him. I thank uh, our team, but also to thank uh, UCTV, our TV, and to thank you, our host, oh, Sarah, yeah. and my <laughs> colleague, Victor, yeah. who have known each other for some time. He's a friend. Good evening. Thank, thank you so you. much, Father. Thank you. Now we'll sit for a blessing and close our show.
Okay, so let us receive a blessing to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed evening. Thank you, Father. People. Now, companies, businesses, and organizations can make bulk payments easily with Centenary Bank's corporate center swift to anyone without the need of a bank account anywhere, anytime, just like that. The recipient needs only their phones, national ID, and token number received via SMS to withdraw money from any center agent nearby. The Centenary Bank's corporate center swift is simple.